Hello, my name is Dewan Williams. I'm a racial equity specialist in DEP, and I'm happy to be with you today to speak with you briefly in regards to a new initiative called the Equity Leadership Screener here in JCPS. Our purpose today is to preview and communicate plans to implement an equity leadership screener in a hiring process for school leaders starting with principal openings this school year. The Chief Equity Officer, Dr. John Marshall, believes that all JCPS staff should be willing, able, and proven to lead with equity in mind. Now, with that being said, we felt like the best place to start with that filtering of equity, if you will, is with our leadership, our school leadership. So we started exploring the ways of screening for equity. So I started to work with now our chief of schools, Robert Moore, on developing a system to filter for equity. We first looked at current leadership hiring process, application and documents, the predictive index, the slating process, interview committee, and of course, the SBDM. But next, we also pulled in research from the Wallace Foundation and made connections to JCPS's racial equity policy. Of course, the racial equity pillar and policy calls for JCPS staff to address the historically marginalization and disproportionate outcomes of students of color. Now you're aware that the new PISO standard has standard three, has equity and cultural responsiveness as one of the standards and one of our focuses. But what if? What if we created a system that screens for equity to ensure that the candidates applying for school leadership positions are the most favorable and equitable for all students and that they will actually see into an equity lens? But we have an opportunity here to filter for equity. So basically it's this. Evidence of addressing racial equity in your current role. So a candidate seeking a position identifies and looks at, evaluates their, their own um, influence and role within their current position. What has the candidate done with regards to racial equity? What trainings has the candidate attended with regard to cultural competence? Over 300 hours of professional development a year are offered by our department, the Diversity, Equity, and Poverty Department. What proven and positive impact has the candidate had on improving racial equity in the school? So we took all that into account and we identified four dispositions. The first disposition, and I'm going through this briefly, um, just a high level overview of the screen itself. But the first disposition deals with data-driven equity solutions. Leaders identifies and utilizes school data to confront inequities and improve outcomes for students of color through action. So basically, there's equitable descriptors that's, that's, that you actually have uh, that help you to demonstrate that competency, that disposition when it comes to data-driven equity solutions. Number one, and I will just kind of skim over these, okay? Number one, confronting behavior that openly and covertly promotes inequity, colorblindness, and deficit thinking. Number two, regularly examine, examining district data for signs of inequity with the district leadership team. Are you utilizing the racial equity scorecard, the comprehensive school survey, Three, purposely building the capacity of others to examine their own assumptions, beliefs, and personal biases. Are you establishing high expectations for adults and students in your school, regardless of identity or background? Are you regularly engaging in conversations with stakeholders about racial equity and access, even in the face of risk and pushback? 
This position number two is focused around culturally competent practice. So leaders practice decision-making and responsiveness to ensure alignment to culturally competence, competent school-wide. As you can see, these are the descriptors under this disposition. I'll give you a moment to kind of glance over. But number three, for instance, in group discussions, are you paying a close attention to which voices aren't being heard and inviting them to express their perspective? If you are, how are you capturing that? How are you documenting those evidences of that type of leadership? When decisions are being made, pushing the decision maker to question which groups are benefiting or being left out and why. The third disposition focuses on disruptive equity leadership. Leader demonstrates actions and judgments that disrupts inequities in schools. So the first descriptor is creating the conditions in common language for regular courageous conversations around equity. That's rather utilizing the REAP as displayed there to the left, the R tool, your racial equity plan. Of course, your empty is a driving document for a lot of the work that you do in your school. And then your racial equity committees, also called RECs. Number two, are you building others' capacities to learn and practice language and behaviors that are responsive to differences across lines of race, ethnicity, language, class, religion, ability, gender identity, and expression, sexual orientation, and other aspects of identity. I know that's a lot there, but just take a moment to dive into that and to see how am I doing as a leader to build a capacity of my staff in these areas. Another descriptor is are you providing the space, tools, and support for staff to reflect on their own personal beliefs, biases, assumptions, and behavior, especially those who have been historically minoritized? Are you providing structured and consistent professional learning opportunities to develop and deepen cultural res responsive teaching practices? Are you modifying systems, methods, resources, and strategies to facilitate academic achievement of underrepresented societal groups? This position four focuses on reflection and growth of, on equity practice. Leaders reflect on personal and professional growth as an equitable educator to influence practice. So that deals with, are you seeking feedback and looking for evidence to help reflect on how you are leading for equity? Are you continuously reflecting on and examining how your role might contribute to inequitable practices? Are you actively seeking to learn how privilege, power, and oppression operate historically and currently in education? Are you recognizing the privilege, the privilege you might hold based on position, identity, or background? So we have actually piloted this screener with three groups this past year. Our emerging leaders, who are some of our JCPS employees looking to be principals, our aspiring leaders who are JCPS employees that are um, seeking principal certification at Spalding University, and then our Louisville teacher residency, which are brand new employees of JCPS that are just trying to get into the teaching career field that we're glad to have. It's important that we change the narrative here. Some may say it's not fair for applicants there who are not in JCPS. Any leader in public school should have evidence of equity. It's not fair for applicants who had principals or area superintendents who do not permit this type of work. So it's important that you show evidence that you took initiative and ask, but also all administrators should have racial equity goals. Not fair for white applicants. 
Well, this is based on evidence of equity and who has produced based on that evidence. And SBDM picks the principle. Well, SBDMs will continue to be trained on racial equity and the superintendent has the final say on that. How do you capture your equity work, you may ask? You'll be able to utilize the screener guide. I'll show you in just a moment. And then also, I'll show you a sample of a, of a aspiring leader just real briefly. But you'll basically be uploading your evidences to the Google form, similar to the way you apply for principal jobs now. Some of you have done that. So here is the evidence guide. You'll see this in a similar form to the R tool, a guiding document here in our district. And you'll see that um, this position one here, the descriptors are listed below. In the right hand side, you're able to upload and provide evidences for work in regards to those descriptors. So for instance, if you have one, uh, an area that's a gap or issue or concern, what was the action towards that concern? And then what was the impact of solution from that action? Here's an example of one of our aspiring leaders. Who actually filled out this in uh, as best practice form, identified a problem, what action was taken towards it, and then what was the solution? In addition to that, uploaded evidences, uploaded artifacts rather of, to support those evidence. So to recap, you have the four dispositions, as I stated, and all you do is upload evidences to support your work in those four dispositions. So in JCPS, we're screening for equity by using the Equity Leadership Screener. It's been my pleasure speaking with you today. If you have any questions, please email or call me. I would love to speak to you and give you information in regards to the screener. Have a great day.